The show began in 1967. And at the time, there were very few panel discussions. Now you see them everywhere. It was not the case then. When it started, there were three networks and public television, which was in its fledgling stages, to be sure. But that was it. That was the ball game. And there was no Twitter, there was no Facebook, there was none of that stuff. No cable television, really. One of our public affairs producers, John Davenport, came up with this concept where he would, in this case, moderate a show which would have four journalists who were pretty well known in journalistic circles, but certainly not on television, sit around the table and talk about their beats. He was very particular about who he had in that program, okay? And these were people he respected a great deal. And each of them, in turn, knew their beats. I mean, they knew what they were talking about, okay, in their respective fields. So you had uh, Peter Lissagor, who did the White House, uh, from the Chicago Daily News. Harry Ellis, who worked for the uh, Christian Science Monitor, he was the economics guy. Charlie Cordry, who was kind of Defense Department for the Baltimore Sun. And then Neil McNeil was the co congressional correspondent for Time Magazine. And they would sit around and talk. The show was rather structured at that time, whereby each of those guys got six minutes on the show. And they would do, let's say, a minute and a half's worth of synopsis of what went on in their particular field. And then they would open up to questions for the other guys. If the Saudis, for example, who certainly are not going to like this treaty, if they continue to provide subsidies for Mr. Sadat, they could, all they need to do is just keep the money coming, no matter what they say. Remember the words of a famous United States politician who said, watch what I do and not what I say. That's what we need to do in the context of the Saudis. It was always a very civil show. There was never any controversy. Nobody was, you know, they would have a disagreement of things, but it was not like pitched battle, you know, like, like you see sometimes. I still got a sense of the White House this week that it was really rock and roll, that everything was still kind of skidding along. A lot of successes, but even family and medical leave, for instance, they had their bill signing all scheduled for Thursday night and they were ready to go and it didn't go. And I mean, it seems like everything is being done a little bit, I don't know, by this, skin of their chin. Well, huh? keep in mind the fact, first of all, that Democrats have only run the White House for four of the last 25 years. I mean, they're out of practice doing this kind of thing. I joined the station, the first full-time job out of college, and a full, first full-time announcer for WETA in 1964. For the first years of it, the way it was structured was that I would read a topical headline for each night each show. The president approves mild sanctions against South Africa. One of the stories tonight on Washington Week in Review. When Lyndon Johnson was in, he most weekends left to go to the Texas White House on Thursdays. And most of the town, and it was the opinion of the panelists, that Really nothing happened on Friday, you know, this was like the, because he was out of town and the, so the show was done on Thursdays, it was not done on Fridays and only after he left the office um, did it move permanently to Friday nights and we did it live and I did it live every single Friday from, well, I guess it's easily 12 to 15 years and till Paul Duke came. Now here's moderator Paul Duke. Good evening. A few things have happened this week. Senator Bob Curry won the Democratic primary in South Dakota. Congress has rejected President Bush's economic recovery program. And the Supreme Court has joined the battle against sexual harassment. But if I run into somebody and they can't kind of comprehend what it is I really do, I'd say, do you ever listen to Washington Week? Oh, yeah, sure, we do this all the time. I said, well, I've been the announcer in that program for many, many years, you know. Oh, okay. And even my mother didn't really know what I did, you know. For example, when I started doing the program, I would say, Mom, she lived in Florida at the time, and I'd say, tune in, 8 o'clock. For the first three or four weeks, I, she'd call me up, she'd say, where were you? I didn't see you. 
I said, well, no, it's, you'd never see me, okay? You would hear me. Well, I listened to the show. I didn't hear you either. I said, when do you tune in? Well, you know, a couple of minutes after. I said, well, you have to tune in straight up, you know? right at the time. Once again, from the Mahaffey Theater at the Progress Energy Center for the Arts, here's moderator Gwen Eiffel. Thank you. And thank you to Paul Anthony, our voice of Washington Week for 40 years in person. And the, again, the civility of it was something which is extraordinary, which is carried on in the news hour for all oh, these many years. Uh, the same kind of thing, even when they're em embroiled in what's going on in the world today. And that's how it began, and um, it just flourished after that.